Hazreen Ikiram, Honorable Assembly. Today I would like to leave you with something that would remain with you for the rest of your lives, inshallah. It is a gift from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, priceless. No money can buy it. Alhamdulillah, we received this gift through Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah who narrated it to us. And I got it through Maulana Zubair, Hafizahullah from England, who was very, very, very close to Hazrat, our late Hazrat Maulana Yusuf Mutala, Rahimahullah, wa nawar Allahu marqadahu, wa nafa'ana bi ulumihi, ameen. And he sent it to me, and I'm going to give you it today. It's a dua. But when, inshallah, when the was for myself first of all is finished you will understand how priceless this gift is and then for those of you who want it it's short you can learn this dua in one minute two minutes for those of you who want it and have not memorized it in the, from, from, from this was go to Maulana Saeed and ask him for it show the talab when you want ilm, you go towards it. That's why it's called talabul ilm. You show that talab, that zeal, that, that interest. And you go to him and ask him for it. If I ask myself a question, if I ask you a question, that is, when, when am I going to die? When are you going to die? We fool ourselves by thinking we have a lot of time. One of my friends in India had given me a plaque which read as follows, don't expect to repent by the 11th hour. You may die at 10.30. I always remember that. Don't expect, expect to repent at the 11th hour. You may die at 10.30. We fool ourselves in thinking we, we, ha we have plenty of time. And normally when a person dies, normally he thought he had more time. But most people don't know. We always think that we have time. And we always thought we had more time. So when, when is your time? When is my time? When are we going to die? I don't know. Yesterday is dead and gone. That is al the past tense. It is so distant, so by, so distant. We can never ever get it or grasp it again. I read a beautiful Makulan statement which goes as follows. Time, time is like a river. You never get to touch the same water twice. Wow. Ya yeah, Allah, Ya yeah, Rabb. I'll reveal the whole surah about time. Well, ask. Time is like a river. You never get to touch the same water twice. This minute, you never get to touch this minute again. It's gone. Each minute is like a flow of the river. So, a time comes in a man's life, especially if he is older, but not specific for the older people, for everyone when a person says, you know what, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I am tired. I am tired of going in the wrong direction. I am tired of being amongst the neglectful one. Hazrat Maulana Zulfikar and Naqshbandi Hafizahullah said, that the pehla qadam, the first step a man takes in going towards Allah, if a person wants to get the love of Allah, if a person wants to get marifat and recognition of Allah, pehla qadam is admi ghaflat. The first step is to not be negligent, admi ghaflat. 
not be negligent. Says Allah, وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Don't be of the ghafilin. Allah says it's a command, don't be of the negligent ones, the neglectful ones, the forgetful ones. وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ A time comes in, person says enough is enough, this ghaflat, this negligence, this wasting of time. The waters are flowing, the waters of time are flowing. We never get to touch the same water twice. The past is gone. Tomorrow is out of sight. What we have is now, what we have is today, what we have is the present. We don't have tomorrow, we don't have yesterday, we have now. And that now is to prepare for the meeting of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prepare for dying. And how do we want to die? How do we want to die? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Ay iman walu. O people of iman. Ittaqullah. Fear Allah. Hakka to kotihi as he ought to be feared. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And don't die except in a state of Islam. Don't die except that you are Muslims. As Muslims. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Submitting to Allah. Don't die except. As Muslims, reciting Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashadu anna Muhammadan abdu wa rasulu and dying Iman in our hearts and verbally expressed through our mouths, through our lips. Iman in our hearts and verbally expressed. Ya Rabb, Ya Allah. So, a wise person is one who makes use of every minute, every second, every hour, every opportunity. He makes use of it because he's never going to touch that water twice and it's gone. Okay, so we know that we have to die and Allah says, La wala tamutunna illa wa anta muslimun. Don't die except as Muslims. Ya yeah, Allah. So, our beloved Hazrat, Rahimahullah, Hazrat Maulana Yusuf Mutala, Rahimahullah, he sent us this dua, he taught us this dua, he taught his students it, and Mawlana Zubair sent it for me. And that's the beauty of our elders and our Kabir and the Awliyaullah. We benefit from them when they're alive. We benefit from them even when they are dead, when they have gone to the great beyond. Sometimes they even come in dreams. And we see them in dreams. Alhamdulillah, I was fortunate last night to see Hazrat in my dream. MashaAllah. Rahimahullah. Rahimahullah. So, this is about dying without any sins. That we die with Iman in our hearts and we verbally express it. Dying without sins. La tamutunna, don't die illa wa anta muslimun, except that you are Muslims, submitting to Allah, having your sins forgiven. Sayyiduna ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever says when going to bed at night you go to your bed you go to your bister one time it will take you less than a minute to say the dua and in some riwayats whoever says whenever he goes to sleep our hazrat Rahimahullah said that normally two times a person goes to sleep in the night and sometimes in the day. Say it when you're going into sleep in the day and at night. Sayyiduna ibn Abbas 
radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever says when going to bed at night first sentence alhamdulillahilladhi ala faqahar praise be to Allah Allah who is elevated who is Ali who is high faqahar and who has dominated and subdued his whole creation. Hazrat says, Subhanallah, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come in this dua, some of his names. We hear about the 99 names of Allah, said Hazrat. These 99 names are not the only names of Allah. They are called the Markazi names or the Markazi Sifat. That is the central, basic names and qualities of Allah. But Allah has other names. Allah is a Sattar, the one who covers. Allah is a Shafi, the cure. Nabi alayhi salam is the caller to Allah. Allahumma rabba nas, mudhib al bas, ishfi, anta Shafi. You are the cure, you are the healer. So there are other names for Allah. The 99 names are the markazi names or the basic central sifat and qualities of Allah. Here we have a connection between Allah and Faqahar. Hazrat said this is given the tafsir of the ayat. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْكَ ibadihi That Allah is Qahir. Allah is the one who is dominant. Allah is Al-Qahir, Al-Qahar. The one who subdues everyone. He's dominant. This, this part of this dua is given us the tafsir وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْكَ إِبَادِهِ That Allah is Al-Qahir. فَوْكَ إِبَادِهِ He is above His servants. No one is above Allah. No one's call, statement, authority is that of above Allah. Even with respect to whatever it may be, in a general form, no one is above Allah. Allah is Al-Qahir above his servants. Nabi alayhi salam is to tell Allah, Anta Zahiru, oh Allah, you are Zahir. You are the one who is manifest, open, apparent, and above everything. There is nothing above you. You are so Zahir, you are so apparent that there is nothing beyond you. Laisa Fawqaqashay. But Allah is the only one who possesses opposite qualities. But at the same time, you are so barten, you are so hidden, you are so many, so hidden, so secret, so internal. Laisa Duna Kashay, that there is nothing beneath you, there is nothing below you, there is nothing underneath you. So the first part of the dua, Alhamdulillah, the Allah Fakahar. Praise be to Allah, Allah who is elevated and beyond his creatures, Fakhar, and who has subjugated them and dominated them, and they all under his control. Walladi Batana Fakhabar. And that one, praise be to that one, Batana, who is so batin, who is so internal, Fakhabar, that he is Kabir, he knows everything. Al-Latifu al-Kabir, wa huwa al-Latifu al-Kabir. He is so internal that he is aware of every single thing, even the most deep, the deepest thoughts within you. Your, your most secret thoughts, your deepest thoughts. Allah is so barten, so internal that he is Kabir, he is aware of that. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ala faqahar. وَالَّذِي بَطَنَا فَخَبَرْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي مَلَكَ فَقَدَرْ And praise be to Allah, Malaka, who is the owner of everything, who has owned everything. In Arabic language, the past tense is used for emphasis, for ta'akid. Malaka, who owned everything, he's the owner of everything. Maliki Yawm al-Din in one kirat, the owner of the day of Qiyamah. Maliki Yawm al-Din. Maliki Yawm al-Din. The king, Allah is al-Malik, Abdul Malik, Abdul Malik, al-Ladhi Malaka, who owned everything, Fakadara, 
and who has Qudrat and power of everything. So we have Malik, we have Al-Qadr, names of Allah coming in this dua. Walhamdulillahi alladhi yuhyi al-mawta and praise be to Allah who gave, who, who brings back the dead to life. We, the name of Allah comes in here, Al-Muhyi, the giver of life, Al-Muhyi, and he is also Al-Mumit, the taker of life. Walhamdulillahi alladhi yuhyi al-mawta, and praise be to Allah, hamd is for Allah, who gives life to the dead, to the mawta. Wa huwa la kulli shayin qadir, and he has qudrat, and he has power over every single thing. So, Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever says one time when going to bed, any time, even during the day, you say it one time. Alhamdulillahi alladhi ala faqahar walladhi batana faqabar Walhamdulillahi alladhi malaka faqadar Walhamdulillahi alladhi yuhyi al-mawta Wa huwa la kulli shayin qadir He will die without any sin He will die without any sin And Hazrat said, commenting on this He said this means jabbi marega Jabbi marega, whenever he dies Whether it is now, the morning, in the evening, tomorrow Whenever Jabbi Marega, whenever he dies, he will die without sin. This is from Kanzul Ummal, the Hadith book. Kanzul Ummal, Kanzul Ummal from Ibnu, Ibnu Asakir, 41325, as encouraged by Hazrat, Sheikh Al Hadith, Hazrat, Mawlana Yusuf Mutala Sab, Hafizahullah. So, Hazrat said, that look how merciful Allah is. That Allah has given us so many U-turns. It's not just a straight road, straight highway. Allah has given us so many U-turns that we can examine ourselves. In which direction am I going? Am I going in the right direction? Wow, no, no, no. I need to make a U-turn. Here's a U-turn. Here is a simple U-turn. It will take you one minute to memorize this dua. Get it from Maulana Said. And say it, as I said, Jabbi Marika, whenever he dies, he dies without sins. He dies as a Muslim, goes into Jannah. Look at this. Allah wants us to turn towards him, to come towards him. And not only there's so many U-turns Allah has given us for us to come back to him. Allah says in the Holy Quran, Alam yakni lilladina amanu wa antakshya kulubuhum li dhikrillah Has not the time reached? Is not enough enough? Alam yakni lilladina amanu Is it not near? Has the time not reached for the believers? Antakshya kulubuhum li dhikrillah That their hearts be, be filled with khushu, fear, humility, devotion for the zikr of Allah Is it not time? Where are you going? Where are you going? Fafiru Allah. Run. Run towards Allah. Make that you turn. Make that you turn. Fafiru Allah and run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, I will leave you with another thing that Hazrat Mawla Yusuf Mutala left us with. These two great gifts. This is priceless. Die whenever you die, die without sins. Wow. And that's what we're living for, to prepare for that. And the other thing he said that Rasulullah alayhi during the last part of his life, he would do plenty of his tigfar and he would say, Allahumma, Allahumma gfirli wa tub alayya inna ka anta tawwabul ghafur. Allahumma gfirli wa la forgive me wa tub alayya and turn towards me with your forgiveness. Inna ka anta tawwabul ghafur. You are at tawwab 
the one who is off returning with forgiveness and you are the most forgiven. Hazrat said that this Nabi Alayhisam in his last part of his life he would recite this a hundred times. Sahaba said that they would check that Rasulullah, they would even check it that if he sat long in a majlis he would recite it a, a hundred times. We too, after we are finished in a majlis and we sit long in a by ourselves do it a hundred times. And he would even recite it in his salat for a hundred times. Allah maghfirli wa tub alayya innaka anta tawabul ghafoor. Hazrat said that the, the, the salat of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not like our salat. He says the salat of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, the Sahaba said about his salat, kana qariban min as sawa that all the actions of his salat were like approximately equal. Unlike us, we have a lot of inconsistencies in our salat. We read, Hazrat says, when we perform salat, our kirat is very long. And the ruku, very short. And the sajda, even shorter. And as we get up from the first sajda, we're like a crow picking up something, we rush for the second sajda. He said, Nabi alayhi salam salat was not like that. He used to take his time in his kirat. He would take his time in ruku. When he get up from ruku, he would pause and take his time. Allah, Rabbana. Rabbana. Allah, Rabbana. Rabbana laka alhamd, Rabbana wa laka alhamd. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan. Taking his time in ruku. Take his time in sajda. When he get up from sajda, he would not rush again, he would take his time. Allah maghfirli, warhamni, waafini, warzukni. Like the imams of the haramain. Have you ever performed salat behind the imams of the haramain? Or do they perform their salat? They follow that sunnah. As I said, we don't perform salat like that. It's amazing. Sometimes even those who are, sometimes those of us who lead salat, first rakat, the first ruku, short, short. Sajda, first sajda long. Second sajda, shorter. Second rakat, the ruku a little longer. Sajda, shorter. Sajda, there's no consistency in the salat. Sahaba said, Kariba mina sawa, that all the arkan of salat approximately were equal in the salat of the Prophet. So he said, Nabi is to recite this dua a hundred times in his salat and he would space it out. He's talking about nafil salat. But even when we lead for salat, there should be consistency. Keep your, let's keep our arkans kind of equal. So the, the first rakat is like the second, like the third, like the fourth. Not faster in some, shorter in some, longer in some. So, Hazrat said, a nice way to do it, and this is when you are performing your nafil salat, is to recite. When you go two rakats, so you go down, your first sajda, Allahumma gfirli wa tuba alayya, inna ka anta tawabul ghafur, 25 times in your first sajda. You get up, Allahu Akbar. Go down for second sajda, 25 times. Allah maghfirli wa tuba alayya inna ka anta tawabul ghafur. Rise 50. Get up for your second rakat. You go down. First sajda. Allah maghfirli wa tuba alayya inna ka anta tawabul ghafur. 25. Come back up. Sit down. Go down. Allah maghfirli wa tuba alayya inna ka anta tawabul ghafur. A hundred times in your salat. Hazrat said start doing that. You will see a big difference in you. A big difference in you. And you know when the Nabi alayhi salam started doing this? He says, especially for those people who have reached 60 years. In Bukhari, there's a hadith that Nabi alayhi salam said, Man balaga sattina, sanatan, anybody who reaches 60 years, faqad a'adharahu Allah, Allah has snatched away any excuse from him. He has no excuse again. The commentators mentioned that the hamza in a'adharah, that Hamza is for salb, is for snatching away. Mambalaga Satin as anybody who reaches 60 years, Fakad Allah has snatched away any excuse from him. What excuse? What do you want? So this came when 
the Surah Al-Fat was revealed. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim Surah Al-Fat, which reminds me that as we end, but as I said, this is the last but not least. Somebody, some of the Saba used to complain to Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala that as in his, his gatherings, he would have a lot of youngsters in front. And they would say, how you have these youngsters in front of you? Like Abdullah ibn Abbas and other youngsters. And he told them, he says, my majlis does not, it's not the people who are in my majlis, the criterion for their being close to me and my majlis is not age but ilm, knowledge, intellect, wisdom, taqwa. And they used to talk about Hazrat Ibn Abbas, this young boy, how come you, he's so close to you and he's always up in front. He says one day you will know why. So one day he asks the same, he asks the companions, his friends, he says tell me what do you think about Suratul Fatih? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا So he says tell me They say well this speaks about the conquest and the Futuhat and the conquest and the spreading of Islam. And people will come into the deen in, in, in big groups, in huge groups, in great crowds and multitudes. And he says, MashaAllah. And he asks the young Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas, tell me what you think this surah tells. What message this surah brings or, or brought. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala numa said that this surah brought the news and the cover of the demise and the departure of Rasulullah from this world. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala numa said, Ara kama I think the same, I think the same way as you think. I think the same thing that you think. My rai is your rai. It's about the death of Rasul. When this surah came down, after that, Nabi alayhi salam would hold on to this dua. Allah maghfir li, oh Allah forgive me. Allah maghfir li. Wa tuba alayhi and turn to me. Inna ka anta tawabul ghafur. He would turn. In his majlis, he would say it a hundred times in his salat. So Hazrat says that we should make this also a practice. Especially those who have reached 60 years. But not only for them, all of us. Because we never know when death would come. But especially those who have reached 60 what is it? It's time to go back. Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you and me the tawfiq that we would make a firm, we would make a firm intention. The first step is called niyat. Stronger than niyat is called ham, which is a firm intention. Stronger than ham is something called azman, which is a, a determination. So it's niyat. Stronger than niyat, ham. Stronger than him, Azmun. Let's make the Azm today that we're going to take that wave and ride it all the way to the shore. And we're going to say, as the Prophet والسلام, taught us to say, Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni tubtu ilayka min al maasi, O oh Allah. Indeed, today I turn to you from all sins. Allahumma inni tubtu ilayka min al maasi. لا أرجو إليها أبدا. I'm not gonna go back to them. 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 الله ما وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وجعل آخرتنا قيرا من الأولى وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين.